The following is a transcript between Matthias De Stefano, referred to as me, and his higher self, referred to as I am. Originally produced on January 6, 2021, under the constellation of Capricorn in the mental week, examining through the root chakra. Me. In the pyramid today, they were fixing things inside. There were workers with ladders, and they were taking out many ropes from inside a sack. For a long time, they dedicated themselves to extracting each piece of a rope and beginning to untie them to tie the ends of the ladder well. I am. I am the ladder of evolution. Me. Oh, that's right. I didn't realize until now that you mention it. Today's affirmation is what was happening inside the king's chamber in Cheops, a long staircase that was being tied with ropes so that it was firmer and safer and thus reach what they had to repair on the roof. I am. Today, the evolutionary ladder was literally activated in the pyramid while you were there. Symbols to show what happens on other planes. Me. Yes. And then I could feel the presence of the teachers. At first, it felt uncomfortable. They were even asking me to stand up, that I could not sit or meditate, or even if I were not meditating. And then one of the teachers whispered to me, Observe, contemplate. I only saw the ropes. I did not remember that this month we are traveling through the ladder. Very well, I didn't contemplate well. I am. And what did you see? Me, I saw the knots, and I remembered the image of when we tied or untied our shoelaces. The knots we make must be firm enough not to drop the structure, or for the shoe to come off, since it would be uncomfortable to walk with something on our feet that is dancing to its own rhythm and that can come off at any moment. We adjust the knots precisely to be sure that things are in their place, that they will not move, and that they give us the firmness in each step. But there comes a time of day when we take off our shoes, and then we have to untie the laces. And that's where I saw something interesting. I am what? Me. The way we do it. Some sit and take all the time in the world to analyze the laces and find just the right folds to pull from to undo the knot and loosen the collar of the shoe. Others pull the ends, watching how they fall apart by pulling the the tips. Others, impatient, begin to pull without taking the consequences, and the only thing that they achieve is to tie it more and more until it's impossible to untie what was tied, generating anger. Others, a little more abrupt, don't even look at the lace and forcefully remove their shoe by applying pressure with the other foot, and even if it hurts a bit, they save themselves the strategic time of untying the laces. I am, and what group do you belong to? Me, the last. I never had the patience to untie shoelaces, always rip the shoes off my feet like a beast. I am, Well, I think the universe did not think very well when they chose you to carry out the task of unleashing the planetary nodes. Me. Wow. How much truth in a simple comparison. I am. Remember that phrase, God does not choose the qualified, he trains the chosen. Me. Yes. I don't know where, but something we were told when I was 21 and were being tested with demonic entities. Our thought was... Why does this happen to us and not to those who know about the subject? And this phrase appeared somehow. I am. The phrase wanted to remind you of something key. Life is about learning. The evolutionary development of a being is not given by what he knows, but by what he does not know. You will never find evolution in the things that are familiar to you, but in the challenges of that which is different. For this reason, the diversity of the world is a key to the development of new abilities to expand consciousness. The key is in the conflict. The word conflict arises from con, meaning unity or together, and flibbo, squeeze and narrow. Close everything together, face it, get in front, very close. In Latin, flibbo originated flagliere which means blow. So afflicted is the one struck, and to flagellate is to strike. Me. 
Today in the pyramid, they told me, the brain seeks conflict because it is in the narrowing that it finds progress. And if it does not find a conflict, then it will create one. Why does this happen? I am, by the principle or law of polarity. Me, phew, the famous polarity, which everyone hates. I am, well, you have to understand the difference between polarity and duality. What people really hate to experience is the concept of duality, which is the quality of being two things. This is interpreted by people as having two faces, generally opposite each other, which generate all of the conflicts of existence. And if one seeks harmony or freedom of his being, he needs to get out of all conflict. And therefore, he must escape from the system of duality. Instead, polarity comes from the Greek polis and means axis, that is, the quality of being on the axis and it is related to two extremes that complement each other in such a way that they are never against or in conflict, but rather in complementary balance, unity, and generation. Me. They are both very different from each other. I am. Duality is the distortion of polarities. But to understand this distortion, we must go to the origin. Remember, the mind is the original pulse, which projects all existence from the void through the idea, the thought, the imagination. The intention of living that idea causes the void to be projected in the plenary, that the negative or internal corresponds to the external, and thus the correspondence is born. In the instantaneous movement of the concepts, inside and outside, an axis of manifestation emerges, polarity, negative and positive. As much as you call it the sixth universal law, it is actually born at the same instant as all the others. Polarity is not the one that divides things, but the one that tries to find the balance between them. Me. This changes my perspective of things a lot when we talk about polarized concepts. What you say that is, what the polarity does, instead of separating to face, is to maintain the axis between each projection or distortion in order to maintain order. I am. It is the way of not losing harmony in creation. Polarity is the key to existence in order and perfect balance. Empty and full, nothing and everything inside and outside, internal and external, night and day, black and white. One does not exist without the other. They are the perfect balance. Me. But why then does it become duality? I am. Because what is in perfect balance has no option to change. How many degrees does a spear have? Me. 360 degrees of circumference. I am, and how many days does the year have? Me, 365. Five days more than the sphere. I am, those five days, or four days and a few hours, are the constant option to make a different upward turn, to transcend the previous circle in the expansive spiral. The margin of error and perfection is what gives rise to the constant evolution. Thus, the polarity is attracted to the point where they narrow, generating such a force of pressure that both realities collapse together, bending and splitting in two. What you call distortion, dis, two, and torsion, double. And it is said distortion that generates a reaction opposite to that expected, causing the polarities to change and begin to repel each other, becoming duality. This is where new causes with erratic effects arise, generating a consequence of dual facts and reasons. But this is useful to the universe. Well, it gives you a lot of options. Me. It's like a game. I am. 
Polarity is the law or principle that establishes that the norm is evolution in balance. But it recognizes that without margin for error or erratic movements, there will be no evolution, since without conflict options do not arise from the mind, and for this reason it needs the duality as a way to find those options. That is why today they have told you if there is no conflict, the mind will seek to create one. Me, all of our conflicts arise from the mind, from erratic, confused ideas, from perceptions, beliefs, preconceptions, but it's awful. It depends on how you look at it. Me, in what way, I am, if you see from a high vibration or a low vibration. Those who find themselves at the bottom of the valley, trapped in the shadows, will only see obstacles, hills to climb, efforts to make. Whoever it is at the top of the hill will see the landscape, the sun, the horizon clearly, and going down will be an exercise in grace. But to get to the top, it was necessary to climb from below. In the waves of cosmic vibration, the rhythm marks the hills and valleys of existence the positives and negatives that make up the universal consequence that you call eternity, and without it, there is no balance. Now, if you speed up, you will exhaust yourself faster, and you will get frustrated because in a short time, you have wanted to get very high, and that has only agitated and exhausted you. To get very high, you will need to walk patiently, take your time, and breathe with quality. Me. That is what you told me about the shoes. I am one of those who do everything fast, right? And yet, what is coming out best in my life is precisely the year in which I am doing everything slowly, little by little, day by day. I am. There are those who need to speed up the pace, and there are those who need to slow down. The search for balance is not unidirectional. Everything will depend on where you are. It is a matter of knowing how to observe, analyze, and handle polarity with sharpness. Me. It's a strategy game. It reminds me of chess. I love playing chess. It's one of my favorite board games, but the only person I play with is my six-year-old sister. Whenever I'm at home, she says to me, shall we play chess? And I cannot deny I taught her how to play, and sometimes we do several games in a row. Every once in a while, she is white and I am black, and others it changes. There was one day when we both played so badly and at the same time so well that our kings were at odds. Proudly, I told her, we tied. We're in perfect balance. I am no zero-sum game. Strategy is a Greek concept that refers to lead, ego, and army, stratos, while game is equated to the English word joke, coming from the Indo-European yek, to speak, which reminds us of the minstrel concept, one that plays with words and entertains people. A strategy game is a conversation that seeks as little damage as possible, in which no one wins or loses, and everyone benefits. That is the key to polarity in a harmonic vibration, which you can achieve only with coherence. In the case of manifesting it in duality, the game will become the discussion and the strategy a battle, and only because of a simple conflict of preconceptions and misunderstandings. Me. In other words, the only way to get out of duality is by entering conscious polarity. I am... Without leaving the game, I exchange the discussion for the conversation. Without abandoning the strategy, transcending the need to win through the search for diverse solutions. Whoever puts the idea of competition in their minds will believe that life is about lighting up and ascending, overcoming the shadows, the bad guys, or competing to gain better resources or logic or owning reason and feeding others. An ego that will not have more than 90 years of life. And the same thing happens the other way around, with wanting to use the darkness to overcome the light, 
Nobody wins in wars, everyone loses, but everyone wins in peace. And peace is not achieved with stability, but with mobility, with the freedom of transformation. Since conflicts are born when the one who seeks change threatens the comfortable stability of the herd. Me. This is where we understand that polarity and its diversity only seeks to generate, manifest, transform, and evolve. Transcending duality is learning to use it as a coherence tool and not a survival weapon. I am, and for that, you must take the time to observe the game. As in chess, each step that you take must be premeditated, contemplate, Observe the possible results, because each time you move a piece, you must wait for the opposite to move and to determine your next steps. Tick, tack, positive and negative. When you go to take off your shoes, look at the laces and untie them strategically. Me. As the pyramid workers did today, they tied the ropes on the sides of the ladder to give it stability. I am, the knot is to hold, not to tie. All the knots of your DNA are the links of your existence. They are the data of your evolution. There is no existence without polarity. Me. So to use polarity in my life, I must recognize it as the chessboard. Knowing that each negative or positive movement that I will make will give rise to a polarity mechanism that will balance my steps. If I understand the rules of the game, I can use it to my advantage. I am. Every relationship that you have is a polar negotiation. Negotiation comes from the word neck without an optum leisure. That is, there is no movement in rest but rather it is a constant dispute of values. Negotiation is the relationship of more than one subject or aspect that tries to find balance of values, whether psychological, emotional, physical, or conceptual. Negotiation always brings new data and learning for the being involved and therefore growth. The problem is that you usually do this with the goal of winning, never growing. Use polarity as a form of negotiation for advancement, growth, inner enrichment, and you will discover in the conflict a key to knowledge and not to war. You only need to look, contemplate the world from the coherent consciousness. Me, I am polarity. I flow through existence, nourishing myself with all visions. I am Only then can you create, advance, expand, and become the creator of your own universe.